Hello, thank you for joining me. In this film, I'd like to show you, in this video, I'd like to show you how to uh, label rooms. Remember, it gives you a very uh, dynamic way of doing that. It also gives you a parametric way of doing the same thing, and uh, with that parametric uh, modeling capability, it allows you to create a room schedule a little bit later down the road. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, if we go to the Home tab on our ribbon, go all the way over here to the right-hand side, and go to the Room button, you'll notice that we have a couple different options with that Room button. If we go to the Expanded Panel arrow that's down here, it gives us the two options that are associated with that, and we're going to play with these right now. One of them is the Room button, which is, uh, allows us to number and label a room. Then you have a Room Separation line, which allows us to take a room that might be uh, like maybe a large area and divide that into rooms where we necessarily may not necessarily want to have a wall in there. For instance, there is sometimes a, a kind of a division between a living room and a dining room, and you know there may not be really a wall that separates those, but you can actually draw a wall in there or a line in there that would represent a separation of that uh, of that room. So, without any further delay, let's go ahead and click on the room button. One thing you'll notice with that room button, which is right by your cursor, it gives you kind of an icon here, which a couple of different ele elements associated with it. You have an X that uh, defines uh, the boundary of that room and you have that magenta rectangle that uh, is the ultimate boundary of that. So when you drop that into a room area, it's going to expand to the exterior walls of that room as long as the room is bound and fill in that, uh, that room. If you click to it out here, it's not going to like it. <coughs> Pardon me. Even though it does create room number one out there, it's still not going to like it. So let's go ahead and start uh, labeling some of these rooms. That's room one is out in the middle of nowhere. Room two Room 3, room 4, the bathroom, room 5, the back hall, room 6, the front hall, and then, um, oh, uh-oh, now we have um, now we have an error, delete the room. So, what, what it's saying is we have multiple rooms in the same area. So, let's go ahead and delete room number 6 and see what we can do about fixing that. Do escape a couple times. Let's take our room number 1 and delete that, because we don't want that out in the yard. Actually, it might be in our neighbor's yard. They may not appreciate that. And let's go ahead and separate room number five. If you go in each one of these rooms and click in a room, you can see that it's actually bound. If you click in a room name, it, it shows you in two different formats that it's bound either in red, or if you click inside the room, if you go to the X of that room, that defines that room boundary, you can get it to highlight in blue. There you go. And when it's highlighted in blue, it's selectable, which means you can probably delete it or make modifications to it. Let's go and pick the room separation line. Okay, save the project. It's a good idea to do. And we're going to separate the front hall from the back hall. And what you do is you just draw a line simply from one side to the other and escape. If you go to that room 5 and click on that, you can see that the boundary now has changed. The boundary is bound by all the walls except for up here. It's bound by that room separation line. So that gives us the ability to go back in our room uh, label and label this room as a different room number. And just to continue on, we'll go down here and probably do our uh, living room last. Okay, now we have room numbers. Room numbers a little bit out of joint. Room number one is no longer there, but we have two, three, four, five, seven, eight, and nine. Six disappeared. So six and one are kind of like out there in limbo, and I'll talk about that here in just a minute. So room number nine, let's go ahead and change this. It's called this living room. Remember, everything's in capitals, so make sure your cap locks are on. Everything and anything that might appear in a drawing should be capitalized. So we're going to keep that as room 9. Maybe room 8, we'll call that entry. And room number 7, we'll call that uh, front hall. And this room, we're going to call that back hall. Okay, you'll notice that the annotation, just like with dimensions, annotations are going to scale up or down depending on your sheet scale, on your plan scale. So let's say we want to change a uh, front hall from room 7 to room 6. If you click inside of that and change that to 6, uh oh, gosh, another error. What this is really doing is when we're generating our room uh, rooms in here, when we're labeling our rooms in here, we're actually creating a, a database of which we're eventually going to create a, uh, a room schedule from. We already have room number one, and we also have a room number six in that schedule. We can't see the database right now, we can see the graphical representation of a portion of that database here. But when it gives us that error, 
when we finally get to generating um, a room schedule, we're going to see two room number sixes, and we're going to delete one of those. And if we were to do, like, maybe uh, the living room, let's make that room number one, it'll do the same thing as our room number one is still out there, too, and it's going to give us that same error. So no worry. We're going to fix that database later. So that's how you label a room. Please join me for, uh, for uh, uh, excuse me. Please join me for other videos. Bye-bye now.